Well, good afternoon, Maverick Traders. It's Monday, February 6th. Jim with you here. Hopefully you had a great weekend. Pretty interesting end to the week last week. Well, let's talk about it. I've got my two cents. Take responsibility for it. Let's get into the market analysis because we just kind of floated a little bit lower today. We really didn't gain much, didn't really lose much off of a pretty exhausting end to the week last week. Let's get into the daily news, and I'll just kind of recap last week here. Wednesday, the markets explode higher, and I do mean explode, on a, a, the, a dovish move, the quarter basis point move by the Fed, and their outlook saying a quarter for March, and even that might be it for the rest of the year, depending on how things float forward. So the markets finally got what they wanted, the Fed in line with the market's expectations of lower, lower inflation moving forward. The markets exploded. They took off Wednesday, Monday, they or Thursday. They gapped up. We'll get the chart here in a second. But Friday, Friday came out and just painted a completely different odd picture. 512K when it came to job market added. The employment number just shot. And this was an expectation of than was expected. I had to reread that and dig into it. And there's articles about it's It, it really just hit the brakes on these markets. So that's basically what you've missed if you guys uh, decided to take last week off and um, the weekend. <laughs> so let's see how we finish today. The Dow, the S&P, the NASDAQ pretty much flat across the board relative to what they do. NASDAQ down a percent to me is flat. Uh, S&P just over a half percent and the Dow just maybe a tenth. Russell's down about a one and a half percent. Oil up one and a quarter, then gold up another quarter percent. So didn't really do much based on what we saw, boy, uh, Thursday and Friday. So these markets have kind of parked here, and they've parked in a pretty specific area. Let's go down to the advanced decline line and are above below the 50-day moving average. 73% of the stocks to the downside today. It was a pretty good carryover from Friday's move lower. And then above and below the 50-day moving average, everything's still pretty strong. 78% of stocks are still above that. I, I believe that was 80, maybe 80-20. So a few have moved below that. And a lot of this tumultuousness, all this churning is usually in, is, is mostly in big tech. That's what I've been noticing. They've been gapping up and shooting higher and then falling apart. Uh, and so we've got a lot of investors that are, it looks to me, are really anxious to jump into these, the low area, quote unquote, of these big techs. But boy, Friday really changed their mind. We'll see if that continues the rest of this week. So what am I talking about? Well, it's pretty obvious, guys, here. Let's just take a look at this chart. Uh, let's get my pin up real quick. There we go. So this is the Wednesday announcement, and then the ensuing or the following gap on Thursday. It was all ready to go. This volume isn't a very good representation of what did happen. If you go into some very specific stocks, you will see that these, these volume bars are greatly uh, much larger. It was a big push into a bunch of names and very specific big tech stock names. Browse around and you'll see it. Well, everything was honky-dory until the next day. This is Friday. This is when we got that jobs report. And it was, take a look at it, folks. 512K jobs added versus expected, I think, 140. I mean, it was a massive miss. And so things really kind of started to slip and fall because, hey, all of a sudden, the Fed might not be as dovish as they were five minutes ago, literally a day ago. We'll call it that. So it was this big push higher and then, uh-oh, and here we are. We just kind of parked it. But I will point this out because it's at a very specific level. Overall, this is still a pretty good move to the upside. Now, the blow-off top or this gap to the upside, we've been talking about for a while, and I'll bring it up one more time. This is what was expected, a blow-off top. In fact, let me get uh, let me use this same illustration on a different chart, folks, because the Nasdaq is a much uh, better depiction of what I'm trying to talk about. So everything here is a little bit more exaggerated, and you can see what I'm talking about when it comes to the blow-off top. It's a larger gap off of an already uh, increasing move, but take a look at this volume. That is exhaustion. We call these exhaustion rallies or blow-off tops. And they can be uh, this, uh, a signal of an overextension, at least in the short term. And so far, based on these three candlesticks, regardless of the news, if you threw out all the Fed on, and the employment number, all of that, and just look at this technically, this is exactly what would happen after a blow-off top. There's just no, no, no buyers left. Everybody that wanted to buy is in, and probably for a higher price than they wanted to. 
So after the short squeeze, after the buyers are in, after a huge surge, taking a look at this volume, uh, the next thing you do is float lower. Now that that has all been said, this is still in a bull pullback. You can see that all this price action and all this bearish movement, all this worry from Friday and uh, today floating lower, we are still, I mean, we can revisit that 300 mark on the Qs. The, uh, the SPY was very similar, just not as, you know, not as uh, exaggerated, I should say, but it's in a, a very similar area. So it's difficult to say, oh, that was it. That was the top. Now we're going to fall apart. The markets are going to go straight down. We're going to go into recession, right? That scary R word. We're still not there. And fundamentally, we might not be there. We might not. We we could pull out of this. If the Fed sees a soft landing and maybe this is a one and done employment number, uh, then all of the good stuff can happen. So technically, we just need to chart this thing. And what I see is a big, huge move to the upside and we're pulling back. Looking at the heat map, everything that was green and pushed higher on Thursday after that announcement is now red. Microsoft, Apple, Google were all leading the way, Meta leading the way. Meta didn't really come down much at all. A couple of them held in there. In fact, one of the trades I have today is Tesla. Tesla's uh, hung in there pretty good. Look at that, up 2.5%. He's up here in this top, uh, top right area. So where does that leave us? Well, I'm just going to break it down for you. It's a bull pullback. We had a huge surge to the upside. Could be the blow off top. Could be the beginning of the end. Could be all these great things with my bears and me being a bear as well. But I need this thing to come down quite a bit. It's got to fall apart. It's got to now break this upper support area line that I drew here, up around that 400 mark on the SPY. It's got to break that. It's got to break its moving averages. We got to break a support level down here. Um, uh, sorry, 410 mark. Now we got to break the support at 400. We got to play this uh, uh, this game, setting a lower high, and it's going to be a pretty long, drawn out process for me to say, okay, we're at a bearish trend. That being said, easy come, easy go. We got a gap up to the upside. A bad news, we could have a massive drop to the downside, but that's something that we can't expect or play. What am I doing? I got what's in front of me. Plus one, plus two. I was this over the weekend. Uh, there's just so much buying interest out there. The volume says it. Traders aren't afraid to buy at higher prices. I mean, these things are overextended to the upside. If we can get a little bit of an, a pullback here in the next day or so, or even sit at this at this floor right around that uh, 410 level in the SPY, I'm not afraid to throw a couple of darts to the bull side. There's the outlook. Tesla, CCL, and Wing are my bulls for today. Alcoa I liked. Oh, by the way, I just went around the uh, Maverick community and pulled these trades. These came from two weeks ago, three weeks ago, yesterday, two days uh, over the weekend, all sorts of stuff. So it's all a big hodgepodge, but I did like these trades. So let's take a look at Tesla first. This one feels like it's a little bit extended. It's all right. Um, I, I, I'll play this thing kind of sideways. I do believe it stalls around the 200 mark. It's it's kind of a bummer when these things gap up like this, especially a stock that um, is at this price. If you guys have traded Tesla, it's difficult to get good prices for some vertical spreads unless you're wide. Uh, if you're trying to do like a $2 spread or a $5 spread, it can be hard. Uh, I dare say you're probably better off doing something like 10 bucks, giving yourself a week and a half, um, something like that, or diagonalizing it to see if you can't get a better trade. But I do like it. I like it up here. It might butt its head at the 200. If you think it's early, that's fine. Just see if it can consolidate. Uh, right right below that 200 or add it or even pull back a little bit. Uh, but I do like it on the bull side. This was a weekend chart that uh, Darren and I were looking at as well. Carnival Cruise came from uh, the Wednesday update class. It was a bull back, oh geez, I want to say uh, the 18th of January, mid, mid January. And so it was a high base at 11 and it finally broke its head up and it is actually having that same pullback. So if you guys want to play something bullish above 11 there, um, totally fine, but I like it. Sideways to up on uh, Carl Cruz. And then Wing, another trade from the uh, midweek update class. This one took a little while to get going. I believe we were talking about it back on this ascending part. Uh, let me get to your pin somewhere in this area to break above, oh, about that 152 and a half. And then it did, and it's just been slowly churning up. And this was its first target. You guys can see it actually almost hit it. Oops, sorry, not too straight at the end there. It almost hit it uh, on Friday. But it's holding in. It's, it did go down a little bit, but I see some support even at 160. So sideways to up uh, on wing still looks really good. 
Now, on the other real sideways trade, this is Alcoa. This came to us as a sideways trade. I believe this was last week. No, no, this was the end of January, also midweek cl class. But it's got a range on it. Let's see if I can switch to a box and uh, draw that. I know I've got a box tool here. Let's see if I can draw the range now. Uh, maybe 56 to 50 right through here. Uh, it's, it's kind of a weird color, but that's all right. Now, what's tough about it is today's candlestick. As you can see, that it gapped up and opened up higher here, but it came all the way back down. That's a pretty volatile candle. That's a pretty good range. And you can see the last time it did it was back here about um, second week of July, and it did come down to that 50 mark. So you could play this between 50 uh, and 56 if you wanted to continue to play it sideways. Uh, let me go back to my pin because you can see that there is pretty good support at that 50 as well here. You could see a little bit of a hiccup back in this area. So uh, if, you, if you'd like to see it come down first and then maybe turn back up, if you've got Bollinger Bands on this, it's probably right in the middle of both, but uh, they might be squeezing. But sideways still on this looks good, but just make sure you give it enough of a range. Excellent. Okay. Going to the Bears, ABBV. This was one from Friday's class or the weekend class, and I still like it. It didn't quite confirm to the downside as much. I'd like to see it break the 45, but boy, I just I just love how it's just hurting right there. So uh, bearish credit spread might be kind of cool. Diagonal spread might be great, but once this floor does give at 145, it should be a pretty easy straight shot to 140. There, There's an argument here, maybe 142, but just because it's been pinned here for so long, I imagine that would roll off pretty quick. So Diagonal spread would be best because a vertical spread, if it hits it quickly, you want to be able to unwind this and uh, not be stuck for another week and a half because when, if it does hit it quickly, you're not going to have much in that vertical. I'd say straight puts would be cool, but $145 stock, those puts get expensive. This is volatile, so the, vol the spreads are wide as, as well. But yeah, go out there, do your best. EQT, confirmed today. Now, I feel like I'm a little late on this. I just wanted to show you guys this because we've been looking at the descending triangle pattern. We also have been discussing this a few times because we liked how it fell and like how it falls and then it has its time to come back. And well, here it is again. There's the fall. So it might start that time to come back, but it's in the midst of its fall. So anybody that's been in this trade since we've been talking about it over the last couple of weeks, great work. It's doing exactly what you want it to do. Um, if you guys feel that this has got more into it, um, yeah, t targeting it down to 28 would make sense if you feel it's overextended. See if it can't consolidate right where it's at here at 30, right? Or have that move like it has had in the past. Just be patient, come, have it come back at maybe touch that 32. Uh, but something to maybe throw onto your bear watch list uh, for now. Okay, let's go to ADT. And this one is doing the same pattern as well. I like the, when these do these patterns. Isn't it fun to see it do the same pattern? Consolidate goes up, consolidate goes up, and then now it's starting to fall again. So this just slipped below, and I'm going to say slipped because, let me erase that drawing. There we go, because it's just below that 850. It's confirming. It's staying below that. It might go up a little bit or move sideways. We know how this thing likes to go sideways, right? It went sideways for four days here, and boom, oh, geez, about a week and a half here. So uh, diagonal, diagonal spread. This is something also, if you guys have the avail availability of it, uh, short the stock. Just short the stock. Put a stop up here, about 9 bucks. That might be kind of a fun play. All right, cool. That's what I got for you, at least for a Monday. Mondays are sometimes a little bit hard because there's not much. You know, you only have one trading day. But overall, guys, the breakout pattern in the S&P and the NASDAQ are still in play. They're just bull pullbacks. Now, the Dow, if you take a look at it, it's just kind of consolidating. It did not really participate in that huge surge to the upside. This was all a mad dash to big tech and oversold darling stocks. It really was. In spite of bad nudes and bad projection, these stocks screamed higher. So do these traders that bought these off the bottom have the cojones to sit through, oh, wait, maybe the Fed isn't done putting that, you know, stepping on the gas. We'll see because it... They came out pretty quick on Friday, <laughs> so we'll see where it goes. It's early yet. Just technically charted, I guess what I'm trying to say. Employment and payroll still show expansion. Those things have been a thorn in the side of what these markets believe, and they aren't going anywhere. They're getting worse. Uh, we do have one on the initial claims again on Thursday. 
I, I don't know what it's going to look like because it was less. Remember last Thursday, it was lighter than expected. The market shrugged it off because the Fed was on board, but that employment report was outrageous. So let's see what happens. Fed's on board with the market's outlook of slowing for now. For now, and Friday's reaction was the worries that they might go back to their hawkish outlook. We do still have earnings. We got Activision, uh, Simon Property Group, I believe, and Pinterest, Take Two Interactive. We got a bunch still. Uh, the bigger ones are behind us, and they were awful for the most part. Awful. Awful. And uh, all of them just shot straight up. So we'll see. The exuberance is still out there. There's a lot of people with a lot of money, it looks like, ready to buy off the bottom and don't really care. So. Let's not fight that bull surge. Let's see how far the pullback comes because this is just the exhale after that huge push higher, right? Um, so we'll go from there. All right, folks, thanks for joining me. We'll talk to you next time.